Last night we shared video of Loudoun County, Virginia parents tearing into their school district for pushing critical race theory onto their kids. But what we didn't show you was that Black Lives Matter protesters showed up to shout those parents down. If somebody disagrees with critical race theory, you're considered a racist, which is really not the case. There is no line of distinction, either you're for it or you're against it. And if you're against it, well, then you're automatically a racist. And that's not doing society any good. None of us any good. That's exactly what racism is. Well, joining me now are two parents fighting against CRT in their schools, Ian Pryor, executive director of Fight for Our Schools, and Nikki Neely, president and founder of Parents Defending education. Ian, let's start with you. You spoke at that news conference. So what happened after the BLM crew? It wasn't all that big, but they showed up. What happened? Yeah, it, it, you know, there were about four of them, you know, local BLM activists. We actually refer to them as Chardonnay Antifa out there. But what, right when we were about to start our press <laughs> conference, you had these folks come in with their banner and actually physically occupy the space that we had set up in order to conduct the press conference. And then when the parents, and these parents are dedicated parents that have been working every day, all day, to go out there and get petitions to recall this school board. And when they started speaking, these folks, they didn't want to hear from them. All they wanted to do is disrupt, continually interrupt, harass them, and call them racist. Now, eventually, we were able to get the press conference going. And then when we were done, with the exception of one individual, all the rest of them just left. They, you know, they didn't take the, the time to talk to the press. They didn't take the time to put their views out there. All they want to do is disrupt and silence the opposition, as they say. Now, Nikki, what do you think would have happened if you all tried that little routine with the Black Lives Matter press conference? Oh, we would, I mean, we would be all over the mainstream media, for starters, um, yeah. which, strangely, you know, it's weird to find the Washington Post and a lot of these other D.C.-based outlets not covering this. It's, it's just a total mystery to me. Yeah, um, well, Dem Democrat candidates for uh, Virginia lieutenant governor debated last night, and even they did touch on critical race theory, specifically your county. Sean Perryman said critical race theory is not even being taught in our schools. It's a Republican dog whistle, meaning racist, where anything they disagree with is critical race theory. Ian, is that true? So they claim it's not even it's not even presence, not even a factor. That's that's absolutely nonsense. We, you know, we have actually invoices from the Equity Collaborative in California to Loudoun County Public Schools in Virginia, where they say teaching uh, teachers and coaching teachers on critical race theory. Right. Uh, you know, they talk about culturally responsive learning. Well, you don't have to spend too much time on the Google machine to put culturally responsive learning in and critical race theory to understand that culturally responsive learning is the educational tool to implement critical race theory concepts. They are trying to gaslight people. They realize that they're on the losing end of this debate and they're trying to explain. And you know what the saying is, when you're explaining, you're losing. And we're certainly feeling momentum out in Loudoun County. We've got hundreds of parents that are committed to recalling this school board and giving kids an education in things like math, science, reading, you know, typical things that you want your kids to learn to be able to succeed in life. Yeah, well, Nikki, Washington Post columnist Christine Emba, she's out there defending critical race theory, saying, Calls for racial accountability can feel like an attack when you're not ready to acknowledge your behavior that that of your ancestors has harmed others. So, Nikki, that's what that's what our children apparently should be steeped in is is mm -hmm. especially if they came from other countries, which many of the families uh, from Loudoun County are from other countries. Nothing to do with slavery, nothing to do with they weren't even in this country, but they're supposed right. to be steeped in all of this to learn what? That America is an awful, rotten, racist country. How is that educating our kids? Of course. I mean, we're supposed to be paying for the sins of our fathers. I mean, my grandparents were put in an internment camp, yet I'm not chasing after a bunch of white people because, you know what? It, it, I mean, we can't keep blaming everybody else for what's going on. Certainly, we can teach American history better, but we should not be trying to shame and degrade children, particularly at a time when mental health in children who have been out of school in many parts of the country for, you know, coming on 15 months at this point, to tell, to tell them that they're bad people because of the color of their skin, because of immutable characteristics, is sick. It's emotional abuse. And that's why we see people around the country standing up, just like Ian's doing, just like other people around the rest of the it country. It takes guts. Yeah, it takes guts, both of you. It takes courage. And you're being on the show tonight, and you're doing what you're doing. Every day on this issue, you're inspiring people across the country, and this movement is growing, and we're going to keep covering it. Thank you for doing what you're doing. And the AP line.